Are you concerned about your iodine status? Are you wondering what happens if you have excess iodine? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at some of the consequences of excess iodine, what happens in your thyroid gland, and whether or not there's other things you should be concerned about, what kind of tests you can do if you're having concerns about excess iodine, how you can prevent any problems if you're going to be taking iodine on a regular or semi-regular basis. So if you like this kind of information on health topics, nutrition, hormones, trying to optimize your health or figure out what's going on with your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to continue to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or a medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of health and treatment success. If you need medical attention, don't delay in seeking that treatment. All right, well, let's look at what happens with excess iodine levels. So in this video, we're going to look at what happens if you have excess iodine, and we're going to review some of the information in this review article here titled Consequences of Excess Iodine. And it has some good information in there and also has a nice picture that kind of goes through what's thought to be going on when you have excess iodine. So we'll look at that as well. But before we get into that, I want to go over a few topics about excess iodine. If you're searching for this topic, you may be a little bit worried about seeing excess iodine and reading about the problem problems that can happen. But for the most part, most people that have excess iodine levels or high iodine levels in a blood test or urine test, the chance that it's going to cause some sort of problem is very, very low. However, in some susceptible individuals, excess iodine levels can cause issues for your thyroid gland. But again, iodine in general is very well tolerated and is not going to cause any real problems for most people, even when you're consuming levels well above the RDA or any other similar minimum standard or iodine. So before we look at what happens when you have excess iodine, we want to look at how we measure iodine, how we're determining what excess iodine actually is. Okay, so how do we measure excess iodine or iodine in general? Well, blood tests can be used to measure iodine, but blood tests can fluctuate a lot based on your iodine intake. So urinary iodine is a little bit better at measuring excess iodine, or it helps us better understand when there's excess iodine present. That's because excess iodine, and when I say excess iodine, we mean the iodine that's not not being used to make thyroid hormone or serve some other function in your body, which most of the function is for making thyroid hormone. So excess iodine is excreted in the urine. So when you have normal levels in your urine or high levels in your urine, we could be reassured that it's reflecting a true measurement of the functionality of the iodine in your body. So when there's high levels excreted in your urine, we could reasonably assume that there is excess iodine in your body. Anything above 300 micrograms per liter is considered excess iodine iodine on a urine test. So what happens when you have excess iodine? So mostly the problems that occur with excess iodine are occurring in the thyroid gland. So what can happen is you can have both hypothyroid occur and hyperthyroid occur. And these occur through a well-known phenomenon called the wolf chaikoff effect, which was described by two doctors from UC Berkeley. The exact issues that occur with the wolf chaikoff effect are not completely understood, but there are some distinct things that do happen with this effect, which is what they describe. So this picture is depicted the normal process that occurs in the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. When excess iodine occurs in the thyroid gland, there's an acute reduction in thyroid hormone occurring. And it is thought that the increased iodine actually interacts with this TPO enzyme, the thyroperoxidase enzyme, which is needed to make the T3 and T4 thyroid hormone. These iodine molecules are being oxidized and combined together to produce the T3 and T4. So a decreased activity of the TPO enzyme because of that negative effect of the high amounts of iodine on that enzyme, there's less T3 and T4 to be released into the bloodstream. So that is going to lead to hypothyroidism. In most people, this acute increased iodine levels, they're able to adapt to this so that their body does not take so much of the iodine up into the thyroid gland. And Therefore, there's not a reduction in the thyroid hormone. So when you take in a bunch of iodine, all that iodine is going to flood through your body and a lot of it's going to be taken up into the thyroid gland. For most people, that acute response to higher levels of iodine will be blocked from being taken up by the thyroid gland. So once the thyroid gland has enough, it will not take up more and therefore you won't get this uh, excess iodine interfering with thyroid hormone production. But those who already have thyroid hormone issues like Hashimoto's, like autoimmune things, 
things going on where their body's and immune system's actually attacking their thyroid, they may not be able to counteract those high levels of iodine and therefore can lead to the hypothyroidism, whether it's transient or in some cases can be more permanent. Things. So fail failure to adapt to those higher levels can lead to prolonged low thyroid hormone output. And it's mostly going to be, as I said, those susceptible individuals, but those with maybe low thyroid output already, or those with autoimmune things going on, thyroiditis. A lot of times people have this going on and they don't even know it because it's never been measured. They may not be having hypothyroid symptoms at the time, but in the presence of that excess iodine, it could lead to lower thyroid hormone output. And then they start having symptoms because again, of their susceptibility of what's going on with their thyroid gland. The test to figure out if you have thyroiditis is pretty straightforward. It's called an anti-TPO antibody, and it can be done through a simple blood test. There's also anti-thyroglobulin antibody. Both of those, uh, if those are normal, those we would expect you to not be as susceptible to this. So you still couldn't rule it out completely that these things can happen, but those are the individuals that are most susceptible to it. In some susceptible individuals, excess iodine can cause a hyperthyroid state. Usually that's going to occur in people with goiter. So goiter is where you have like swelling. Uh, you might see like, you know, just kind of broad uh, puffiness in the throat area where the thyroid is. So like I said, most of the time that's going to occur in the hyperthyroid state is going to occur when there's a goiter present, but it has been reported in people that don't have goiters as well. So now you may be asking, well, how much is too much iodine? And I just want to point out some of the sources of iodine that you may not have thought of that can actually cause these excess states. So you can look at this review article for a full source of uh, iodine excess and supplementation, diet, medications, and things like that. But I wanted to point out a few things here too. One being that a common medication that's used for atrial fibrillation and tachycardia is called amiodarone, and it contains 75 milligrams of iodine. Given that the usual dose of iodine is somewhere around 150 micrograms and up to three to five milligrams, this is a huge amount of iodine. So it may be a good idea if you need to take that medication to make sure you're not susceptible, make sure you don't have any auto immune uh, thyroiditis going on. In addition, there's also some, uh, some contrast iodine that's used for radiological studies, and this can be up to 13,000 micrograms of free iodine, which is a huge amount for your body to take in all at once. As long as you're not susceptible, it shouldn't be a problem, but still something to keep in mind for those susceptible individuals. Now, iodine is an essential nutrient for your thyroid gland to function normally. We all need iodine from our diet. Some people need more iodine because they're not eating the things that are going and give their bodies enough iodine to make thyroid hormone. In the vast majority of people, high iodine levels are not going to cause any problems, even at large doses. If you think you might be susceptible to high, high iodine levels, you should have a blood test to make sure you don't already have a thyroid problem or already have some autoimmune thyroiditis going on. And if you're considering taking iodine, you might want to do these tests ahead of time. Even consider doing that urinary iodine test to see if you are actually low in iodine or do a blood test to see if you're low in iodine. Okay, that's all I had for you on this video. What happens if you have excess iodine? If you do have questions about any of the contents of this video or other things related to iodine excess or iodine in general, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that and I'll definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.